All right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us here for the reviewer uh, online walkthrough. My name is Daniel Mendoza. I'm here joined by two esteemed colleagues. I'll let them introduce themselves. Good morning. My name is Vidi Diana, and I'm an analyst with the County of Santa Cruz in the Planning and Evaluation Division. And I'm Nicole Young. I'm one of the consultants that provides support to the county and city of Santa Cruz for core investments. Awesome. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and focus today on um, the core reviewer submission application and, of course, uh, the online platform. Okay, so today we have some three items that we definitely want to go ahead and review. It's going to be the core request for proposal, um, and there's going to be an overview of the RFP resources, technical assistance, and the timeline. And then, of course, we want to honor why we all came here today, and that definitely is to walk through the reviewer um, online portal itself and the different aspects. And then we're going to leave some time um, once we're done with those two to go ahead, uh, just group discussion, questions, anything that arises that maybe we didn't answer during the the um, the review. Hang on, but before that, I'm already jumping ahead. I think there's two questions we wanted to pose. Yes, I was just going to ask okay. you. So as you see right there online, you should be able to see two two questions. And we'll see it live. So the first question is, have you ever used an online platform to turn in a proposal application? And the second question is, have you already created a login account in Reviewer? For the first question, it seems some mostly yes. But of course, a few no's. And then the second question, I see some yes, no, and then not sure. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. OK, so we kind of have a mix, which is awesome. I mean, that's the whole point of this, is that we want to go ahead and get all aspects, um, different ends of the spectrum. So. Seems we're right on track with them. Uh, before we go ahead and jump in, reviewer, uh, definitely want to put out some RFP resources, which highly, highly, highly suggest even before beginning reviewer, um, before uh, logging on, definitely reading the RFP. Um, and here's our core RFP website. I'll jump on it in a little bit. Um, Viriana will go ahead and post it on our chat. However, for those viewing this recording, uh, we also put the link here. I'm sorry, the uh, web address here. And this one really breaks down, um, I mean, it's the whole RFP in terms of timeline, uh, requirements, resources. Um, this right here is for our any addendas, which I believe in the virtual conference this past Friday, uh, there was a mention that there might be an addenda change to um, some of the Board of Supervisor meetings. Um, so this one, I would definitely go ahead and keep an eye out um, throughout the whole RFP process, just in case there is any change. And again, that should be posted in the chat, but for those watching this recording, uh, we put the website here. And then for, again, suggestion, always, always, always try and get into some training, technical assistance. If you have any questions out of the RFP subject matters or some of the topics, and we'll go ahead and discuss this a little bit more um, at the end. But here again, uh, in the chat should be in there. And for those viewing, we go ahead and added the website. Let me go ahead, jump over. And right now we're gonna go to the core RFP 2025-2028 website, which again, you'll see on the right-hand side, there's some information on the training and TA. And then scrolling down here, you can go ahead and read more on the core condition of health and well-being itself and the core, core overall program. Um, but this right here is where we'll be focusing on today, which is really uh, the reviewer. And here, let me see if I can highlight that. This is where you can find any addenda to the current RFP as is. So any changes, uh, though, it'll be posted on there. These documents, I'll go back and refer to these because these are included in Reviewer. RFP, proposal application questions, of course, scoring criteria, budget template, leveraging template. However, these two at the very end, if you want to download them, if it'd be easier for you to have them on your desktop or maybe on your documents file, 
um, you can definitely do that. It's exactly what is on Reviewer. Um, so if it's easier to go ahead, have that already set on your platform, that, that can be done as well. However, in Reviewer, you can also download it. So different options here, I'm just pointing it out. We'll go ahead and review a little bit of the timeline, um, but here's a more in-depth one. And then of course, for those that attended the applicant conference, we will have a recording up soon. And this is something I wanted to point out. This is the question and answer document. So any questions that were submitted through core funding at Santa Cruz County CA.gov, uh, referring to the RFP and some of the, maybe some of the questions again on um, some of the core conditions or some definition that is posted here. Any questions following this, I believe it was June 17th. Any questions after June 17th will be posted on our second I believe it's July 8th, yeah. And our second uh, Q&A document. So definitely, we always go back to this website anytime there's any information needed to go in depth, we go ahead and post it on here. So I'm gonna go jump back into our PowerPoint. And from that website that we just came from, some important highlight, highlight RFP timelines. Uh, any questions that are due, I'm sorry, oops, any questions for the RFP, we want to go ahead and get those in July 1st by 5 p.m. And again, uh, Santa Cruz County, CA.gov. And then we mentioned that, that those questions that make it before the deadline will be on July 8th posted. There are limited trainings left, July 2nd, 9th, and 12th. We'll go ahead and discuss that a little bit later on in this presentation. And then for the RFP, the proposal deadline is August 2nd by 5 p.m. So um, these were some of the deadlines that we saw and timings that we saw on the previous core RFP webpage. And so we're just highlighting it right now. Let's see. Okay. So we came here for reviewer online walkthrough. And again, this is gonna be specific to the online platform, how to upload the information, how to input some of the documents, um, create an account, editing a proposal and creating multiple proposals. If you have any questions on the subject matter within the RFP, that would go to core funding at Santa Cruz County CA.gov. Um, and then from that, once the, the answer is posting, then you would go ahead, take the information that you want to post to that specific uh, question or uh, text box. And this is the platform that you'll go ahead and put it on. Uh, so reviewers should be online. I'm sorry, in the chat, but again, for those viewing this recording, we go ahead, put it here. Okay, how are we feeling? Everybody ready? Can we get a virtual thumbs up? Yeah, okay, let's jump into it. Let's see. Let's go to our online proposal system. Let me go ahead. Okay, so here we are. This is the, we can see it. Yeah, we're on reviewer. Okay, this is the opening page, which breaks down a few descriptions of what core is, of course, and then some of the information uh, that's included in this RFP. And of course it has links. A lot of it is the links we just reviewed. However, if you'd like to click for further information, you are able to. And then at the very end, August 2nd by 5 p.m. Uh, let's go ahead, create an account. Let's see. Mm, I'm gonna create a new account. Let's go back to Oh, you know what? Let me go ahead, go back to the PowerPoint. The reason I'm going back to the PowerPoint is because I wanna go ahead and log out of my current account. And then that allows, that allows you to see how to actually make a, um, a new account. So here we are. 
Okay. Y'all can see that? We're back on reviewer. Yeah. Okay, so I clicked create new account. I'll go ahead and put let's go core funding. I will go ahead and enter my password. Let's see. Putting in re entering my password. And we'll just keep my name as is. Now, most likely, what you're going to see here is it's going to say, hey, Daniel Mendoza, you're already registered. Username is in use. That is me. But this is how you would create an account. You would go ahead. Once you submit, it takes you to the first page, which we're about to see. So if I do have an existing account, I go ahead, switch it over. Core funding, Santa Cruz County. Then I'm going to log in. Oh, there you go. Okay. Before we go to the actual online, is there any questions on how to go ahead and make a, an account? Do I have any questions on that right now? No? Okay. You know, there was a question this might be a good time to ask it uh that was posted in the chat mm -hmm. uh from an organization that has two different departments applying and they want to have two different logins for submitting and reporting is that possible they currently have a core contract and have to share the emails with each other and log in which so, is, can be burdensome right so it's the same program uh would it be the same program and it's just two different emails. Is that what I'm understanding? I think same agency with two programs. Yeah, Denise, do you want yeah. to clarify? Yeah, it's um, we're one agency and we have two major departments and then mm -hmm. each department is applying for their own core funding. I see. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a good question whether the same agency and then split into two programs. There might be, at the very end, I'll show how to make a, a different submission, how to make a, multiple submissions under the same agency. However, one only one submission could be worked on at a time. So it might be best if, if you feel it's going to be worked on simultaneously to create another one. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Thank you for that question. Okay, so beginning Daniel, and review, yeah. Hey, sorry, before you move on, mm -hmm. uh, we have one request. Uh, can you magnify? Can you uh, zoom in a bit on your screen? Yeah. And then hopefully this is another quick question. Someone is asking, the portal has my colleagues' information from when they used this the last time around, but that person is retired. Can they now change, like use an existing account that was created in the last funding cycle and just change the person's name or should they create a whole new account right so the there's basically a, an account login there's a account username and it has information from the previous application yeah um, so do they need to create a new account this time around and if so, can they then change mm. and okay. or can they change the contact yeah. information in there? That'd be a good one to send the core funding simply so that it could be announced overall. And they also, the team will be able to talk to reviewer to see what are the workarounds for that. Yep. Yeah. Good questions though. Okay. By the way, is the screen able to be seen a little bit better? I magnify, I can magnify it a little bit more if needed. Yep. 
see some head nods. Okay. So the first page of review, we have our summary and contact information. And I want to point out that in every every um, section, there is right here a little subheader that just lets you know, you know, additional information. I really want to point out the end under section four of the RFP. Again, the RFP is what we found uh, in our core RFP website where you can download and review this. So I always want to point this out, something just information. It also lets you know as we go through it, it'll let you know uh, what's being um, the different types of points or if there's no points at all. And so I just went ahead, it's very basic, uh, but I just went ahead uh, and put test one. As you can see, ask risk red means, in fact, I won't answer that just to make a point. Ask risk means you can't move forward if it's not answered. Uh, for telephone number earlier, I had this 831. 555, 555, and it didn't allow me to do it because it has to be exactly with the dashes. So just a minor headache save. Website, if you are going to put a website, again, it's not needed. If you are going to put a website, I'll put HSD just so you see what happens. If anything's different from above. Primary program contact information, that's me, meme. Again, phone number, entity type. And these are exactly the questions that are in the application going through them. So let's go ahead here. This is a good one. So here you gotta, I'll remove this. Yes, I wanna remove it. And I'll remove this one as well. So this is how it originally looks before I uploaded it. I'm going to go ahead, upload, and it gives you, let's go balance sheet. It gives you two options. You can upload it from if you have it on desktop or maybe a, um, a cloud somewhere. You can go ahead and choose that. Or if you have it in some sort of um, uh, you know, organizational uh, website that you can go ahead and attach it, you could do it. I'll show both ways right now. I'm gonna go ahead, upload, and there's my balance sheet. I'll go ahead, open it up. It should show right here that it's uploaded. Oh, I'm sorry, that it's uploaded to uh, the file, and then I'm gonna upload and save. Okay, we're good. How about this one? You know, for this one, I actually wanna go ahead, and put in my link, and it's called, uh, We'll go activities. And then my URL, let's see. HSD.com will let me do that. Yep, and let me do it. However, again, these want to be as accurate as possible because once the, it, it does get submitted, once it's reviewed, we want to make sure it's exactly the four, sorry, five we need here. And then one more time. You can go ahead, view it, see what you have. Let's see. Yep, that's my balance sheet. That's what I wanted. I'm set to go. I'm ready. Let's move on next. Ah, of course, it did not let me ask for it. So then let's go test two. And then what else did it tell me? HSD is not a valid URL. OK, so you know what? I don't have a website. I'm not going to put anything. But if I was going to put something, it has to be valid. Okay, let's move on. And here we go again, exactly mirroring the application. We have this information here. Starting with question one, I do want to point out these character limits that they uh, let you know both in the application and on reviewer. And this is just a little gadget that it helps if you need to make things bigger, maybe more condensed due to only 600 uh, character limits, which include spaces. But I just want to go ahead and show, as I'm typing, um, this is just a test. And I also, 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 so once you reach the character limit, it, it won't let you type anymore. Um, you can obviously make a little bit of wiggle room by taking out maybe that. And just test and also viewing. Yeah. 
it ends in also. So character limits are pretty firm, pretty firm, actual firm, and the website itself will not let you uh, go over that limit. Um, again, mirroring the application. Is this program uh, new? I'm going to say it's new. Actually, uh, it's an existing program. How many years has your agency provided? Uh, you could just put two, three, if it's years. What if it's months? There is a little wiggle room with the character limit, so I'll put eight months. Eight months. Here you can go ahead. This is the core condition. And mind you, I want to go back to, sorry, let me backtrack. These answers are not scored. So again, just a little subsection that lets you know how the answers are scored or if they're not scored. Um, I chose learning opportunity as this is a walkthrough. I thought that would be best. However, uh, as you go ahead to go through your application and your program, you choose uh, the core condition that best reflects uh, your program. And then here, of course, you have information a little bit more about the impact statements. Let's see, I think it should click out to another, yeah. It breaks out to another tab, so. Once you're done reviewing, come back. I'm going to go ahead and close it just for the purpose of this activity. And I'm moving on. Again, subsection mirroring the application itself. And here's where we can extend it. This is a good view of extending it. I want to go ahead and extend it. Maybe more. Let's see. That's good enough. And as you can see, because I didn't do the whole character limit, it does show us how many is left. So let's see, I want to go ahead and add a little bit more. You can see the numbers in live. Um, the numbers should be going down. And you can see right there the difference. And then, as we saw previously, once it reaches the max, it will not let you type anymore. And then this goes on exactly for the next couple of questions with, of course, letting you know how much each question is worth. Again, mirroring the RFP application. I'm going to go ahead and take a pause before I move forward. Any questions? No? OK. We're walking through it. I like it. There was, a, I don't know if this is the right yeah. time to ask this one, Daniel, but there was a question in the chat. Uh, can we edit the program name later? Mm, yes. Thinking that might mean like if they start off. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're going to talk about edits. Okay. Um, but yeah, you could definitely edit. And I guess I'll announce right now, you can edit any proposal that's submitted up until uh, August 2nd, 5 p.m. I highly suggest do not wait till August 2nd, 5 p.m., of course. However, if there is something that you just mentioned, a uh, program name, something, um, you know, that arises that needs to edit, you do have that availability. And we'll go ahead and re uh, review that a little bit later. But, you know, um, there's a good time. We talked about coffee, tea, water. I want to go ahead and refresh. So I'm going to go ahead, save and log out. This is our save and log out button. This will not submit your form. OK, I'm OK with that. I'm going to save and log out. Um, I want to go ahead and work with my team, whatever, discuss certain things. And right now, because I'm logged in as administrator, it's showing that I logged out, quote unquote, from the application, but not from reviewer administrator. But you would go ahead, log in, just like we did. Let's see if I can go ahead and bring this screen back. Once uh, you're ready to go ahead, log in and finish the application, it will give you this screen right here. Just how we started. And instead of creating an account, you have already done that. We're going to go ahead and log back in. OK, so I'm logged back in. You know what? Let me go ahead. And review these as I log back in. There is some instructions. And if can, it's some of the information we went ahead and reviewed uh, in the PowerPoint. This, we're going to go over multiple proposals. And then once I come back into it, here's my submission. This is my submission here.
there we go okay that's what i have so far and you know what i'm gonna go ahead edit one thing reviewer does do it it does start from the beginning um not too bad but obviously uh if you're hoping that it jumps right from where you ended you kind of gotta toggle a bit but not too bad okay so here we are now i'm on again mirroring the application propose approach what should be done and i always go back to this subsection go here i want to make it bigger there's 15 characters left not that i need to reach the max however it's just for your own purpose to know and then of course let me go ahead do this 16 characters so spaces do count um, so when you are, if it's Word or maybe a Google Doc, you just want to be aware that um, that transition might give a little bit more spaces as we're just seeing here. I'll do another example program um, addition. So just want to be aware uh, that some spaces, depending on how it transfers over, uh, might create uh, more or less spaces. So just want to point that out. And then, of course, Mirroring the application, question for question, um, good idea. And links, as you saw, they pop out to another tab. Save and log out if I need it, but I think we're doing good. So we're gonna keep walking through. So these are the activities. This is the activities page again, how many points total. Um, so right now I have one activity, right? I put uh, uh, the activity description, what I think I'm gonna do. For B, I went ahead, put, um, yeah, I'll do 12 walkthrough sessions. And literally, I just mirrored this under counseling sessions, but 12 walkthrough sessions for the purpose of this activity. And then I will implement this activity uh, the first year. I think that's good. But you know what? Uh, I press save and log out, talk to my team. We got some coffee, tea, maybe a mix of water. And we decided, you know what? We're going to do two activities um two activities so i'll make it less just to make a point of course i can but don't need to go all the way to the max uh how much did i do 12 walking through sessions 200 well i think i'm in 20 20 walk through sessions on that one and i'm going to implement it on yeah i'll do that for the second year again just marrying 100 counseling sessions example and when I'll be implementing that. Of course, character limits um, based on what you're going to be transferring over, if it's Word, Google Doc, or if you want to write on here, make it easier, um, can just pay attention to some of those spaces that when transferring could arise. I'm going to go ahead and walk through this. Here we go again. Five points, let you know, two characters left. So a lot of it is uh, text boxes. But as you can see, there's also radio buttons that you um, can click on or drop down. Again, we have link here that, as you saw, pops out to another tab. Three outcomes. Um, this is my outcome. I put one. But just as activities, you can put down two, three. Um, and then I just copied, again, the example. The online walkthroughs will increase the understanding. 90% participants, 296 characters left. You can go to limit, you don't have to. Up to you, depending on your specific outcome. Again, subsection, I always like to point that out. And this is exactly mirroring the application. You would input the number. Um, once it goes to the demographic portion, I do want to point out here, and it's pointed out in the application as well, that the total percent should be 100. Um, so just for demonstration purposes, I'll go over 100 just to see what happens. And as you can see, asterisk. Um, for ethnicity, I want to point out that total may exceed 100, again, mirroring the application. And I believe it's the same for gender total makes it 100 yeah primary language again 
I think this one is, should be 100. And then area, I think it is, should be 100. So this is mirroring the, the, um, the application. And then you input the number that um, your program uh, estimates. But I want to go ahead. I know over one, we did put um, over 100. And I just want to go ahead and point out what happens. Again, mirroring the application, question for question. And then I want to type one more thing, one more thing. But again, I'm at the max, and thus does not let me. That's just for visual purposes. Total percent should be 100. So uh, once I put in the percentage, obviously, there was one that went over 100. Demonstration purposes, I want to go next. Did I not do 100? Let's see. Twin, twin, twin. Should be 100. Mm, OK. We'll fix that with reviewer, because it should be. 100 and it lets me go this is why we do the walkthrough this is why we do the walkthrough because it helps us on our end to talk to reviewer i was just speaking with nicole and Vidiana earlier that we caught when we're going to go over um putting in multiple proposals we did catch one glitch that was like you know super helpful to those doing multiple proposals but it wasn't available so just caught another one this is why we do the walkthrough. Um, getting back to this, we're at number 15. Again, mirroring the application. And I always point out to this, I always go subsections. I wonder if I got more words. Nope, no characters left, so it will not let me. But if I erase, it lets you know real time how many characters are left. And uh, we're coming to the end here. So earlier we discussed, uh, actually, I'm wondering. So here you see, uh, click here, download budget template form. I'm wondering, could you see that switch? Were you able to see that switch? Are we looking at the core RFP online? Yep. Okay. So there's what I was talking about. If it's easier for you to have it on your desktop or have it somewhere on your own file platform, this is where you can go ahead, download it. Um, of course, as you just saw, it's also on Reviewer. So let me jump back. Okay. And this is where we will go ahead, download it. Now, oh, what's going on here? Oh, you know what? Mm. No, I don't want to do that. Again. Mind you, has anybody, I'm going to ask the group because I do have a different uh, reviewer account based on administrator. Has anybody uh, uploaded a program budget here in the group? No? Okay. Well, I'll double check um, because right now it's showing the link, but earlier when I was on a different one, it did show that I could do it. So again, I'll double check that. And this is why we do the walkthrough. So I appreciate you all being here. And then, of course, uh, for those that are choosing the option, the provided leverage template, we're going to go here. Let's see if this is able. Hmm. Interesting. Once I'm done uploading these, let's visit this. Interesting. Sorry, I'm right here digging because this one's showing that already uploaded it. So I'll make note and make those updates with reviewer. Once we go ahead and upload these two pages, we go ahead and we go to our once final non-collusion statement. Of course, uh, I'm certifying it myself, Alice HSD. Once I read the statement below, I go ahead and check it off. Let me uncheck it. Uh, you don't check it. I'm going to submit it. Nope. Statements required that you read it. OK. I read it by me. And I'm going to sign it today. I'm going to submit it. I'm OK with that. Thank you. Now, this right here, you will be getting an email to the email you put uh, confirming that you went ahead and submitted a proposal. 
And once you log back in, of course, after submitting the proposals, this is going to be the page you're going to see. We're going to go up here in a little bit, add another submission, but I want to get back to the question that we asked about uh, editing a submitted proposal. So for that, I'm going to go right here to my submission. And this is my submission. I want to go ahead, edit. This is where I edit. And of course, reviewer takes me to page one. If it's not nowhere in page one, page two, you could go ahead, toggle through. Now, let's go back because, well, first, let me pause. Are there any questions up to this moment before we move on to adding another submission? We had a few questions come through in the chat, Daniel. Yeah. So you can tell me whether you want to address these now or, or uh, in a little bit. One question is, can you save and not log out along the way? I don't like if think you wanted that's... to save and just continue, or do you always right. have to log out? Yeah, it's uh, for this specific um, review platform, it's save and log out. And so just to clarify, does that means then that the platform is not like auto saving periodically? So as you toggle through the pages, for example, uh, let's I'm going to change this to nine, right? Or sorry. And once I click next, it is saving. So it's saving as I as I go through the platform. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, as you move through, so it is auto saving as you're moving through the platform. However, uh, saving that specific page and logging out is combined. Um, so save and log out means you definitely want to uh, exit the application. However, what you put in previously, it's it's saved. I hope that makes sense. Yes. Okay. And then we had a couple questions about um, entering the activities and outcomes mm -hmm. for the various contract years. Well, maybe go to that page. Yeah. So it's similar questions, but basically asking, so can you, you can put in different activities for the various contract years and similarly different outcomes by contract year? So by contract year, for this one, as I read it is, um, let me go back to just one. So if, you, if your program is doing different activities in different contract years, this is where you would go ahead and put um, that number of activities so for example, if my program is deciding to do three activities, um, my first one could be 20, 25, 26. My second one, if I choose also to start 20, 25, 26, I will. And if this activity, I wanna choose 20, 27, 28, that's how I would um, input it into the system. But again, it, it depends on your program and um what you're proposing so should they be thinking of that in terms of what fiscal year the implementation starts so if it's Correct. if the fiscal year 2025 26 is selected is it just the assumption that then that activity actually happens all three years unless the applicant says something different in their description of the activity Right. I think, yeah, that'd be a good question. Core funding, right? That'd be a really good question to mm -hmm. see if, if you put 2025, 20, 26, what I'm understanding, does that also mean that encompasses the three years? Yeah, I think that's a fair question for core funding. Um, and once the team, the core team answers that, then uh, depending on their answer, then yeah, we would go ahead and put in here. Very good questions. Thank you. And so, um, Denise, do you want to go ahead and submit your, send your questions? Because I said, um, probably be good to ask those questions about both the activities and outcomes. Yeah. By contract, do you want to go ahead and send that to the core funding address? Yeah, I'll send that to the core funding address. Can you go on to the outcomes page and yeah. show us if there's options on outcomes for the different years? Let's see. 
You know what? Let's go back to one. Okay, so. So for outcomes. Outcomes, I am not seeing years. Let me put two just to double check. No, so you could do different activities in different years, but they all have to have the same outcome. I think that'd be a good question to follow up with core funding. Yeah. Okay. I'll ask them both those. Okay. Yeah. Thank Very you. Very good questions. Yeah. You're welcome. All right, group. Very good questions. Thank you for those. I'll just say, Daniel, before mm -hmm. you move on, because Sally, I see your question. It's, it's similar to the one that Denise asked earlier. What if it's one activity for the duration of the three-year funding cycle? So I think that right. I would say feel free to submit that question also if you want to make sure you get a specific answer to that from the core funding address. Um, but probably yeah. it'll be answered either way with Denise's question and or yours. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does seem if I if I put one fiscal year, uh, 25, 26 implementation, does that carry through the the whole um, contract year? So very good question. OK, so I'm going to go to my submission, go back here if there's not any more questions. OK. So again, once I log back in, you will receive an email and it lets you know, you know, up to the uh, final deadline date, you can go ahead and make any edits and we do that right here, clicking edit. However, um, right here on my submission, I want to go ahead, add another submission. And then it gives me this. You can optionally start a new submission by comping some answers legible from previous. You know what? Yes. And these are my multiple submissions, but I'm going to use the one I just did, test one. So I'm going to copy some of the answers. Of course, I won't let you copy um, the specific core condition you're choosing and maybe some of the funding. But I believe it should give me, as I'm starting, so this is new now. So it gives me my federal tax ID, the head agency, the phone numbers I put. the entity type, more or less than. Again, that is being able to copy, and it won't let me copy this because it's a review is assuming that if it's a new program, you're only copying the agency name and the hierarchy, I, I'm assuming. So then again, I would go test three, name a program if different from agency. It actually is test five. And we go through the steps again. Let's see. Again, will not let me move forward. Of course, got to put this on. And then we discussed exactly how to upload. You have your choice, file or link. And once we submit this, we go to my submissions. So you'll see a couple of mine here. However, I want to go ahead. Uh, here's our test one. I want to view it. And I want to make some edits. OK, you know what? Let's go to my submissions. Again, doing multiple submissions. And I want to go ahead, choose this one, and edit. I want to make another submission. I click this. OK, I want to honor some time. I know we're getting close. I want to honor to have some questions and discussion. Um, so I'll stop sharing for a bit. But again, if I need to come back to the reviewer platform, I can. OK. I think you addressed ahead. all of the questions that were in the chat. So if anyone okay. wants to raise a hand, come off mute or put something else in the chat, feel free to do that. Daniel, I actually had a question. Would you mind no. going back to the first 
basically the first screen of the application in reviewer. Yeah, let me go ahead. And... So the page where, yeah, summary and contact information. Yeah. And you scroll down. So all the, those financial forms that have to be uploaded, right. those are marked as required. So does that mean that like people can't even get past the first page of the reviewer application until they've uploaded those? That in theory, yes. However, um, you know, I've, I've uploaded obviously a, a mock document, right. Yeah. Just to move forward. So in theory, yes, this, this would be needed. However, if it's not the exact balance sheet, it still allows you, as long as you upload something or put a website, um, again, before submitting, it, obviously it has to be the actual document, but, uh, for the purpose of moving forward, you can upload a word doc, um, kind of what you saw a mock budget that I you know, had lying around. So, but yeah, Nicole, to be, um, to be clear, uh, this, the ask risk would have to be um, inputted to move forward in the application. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's actually a good tip or hack that if, um, if applicants are waiting for someone else to be able to provide the financial documents that you can upload a fake dummy document, but just right maybe clearly label that as fake yes, <laughs> placeholder for sure. so that you, so that uh, when you submit that you, and you're going through that you're seeing, oh yeah, wait, that's, that's a document that needs to be replaced. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's a, that's a good, uh, that's a good workaround for sure. I want to go ahead. I'm actually brought, glad you brought us back to this, Nicole, uh, just to close it off. Uh, if you're requesting support, Okay. This is this is through the reviewer customer assistance. However, there is a little button right here. And let me go back to my application. Cause it's um uh remember in Word doc they used to have the little clippy. I'm not sure if it's still there. Little clippy. Well, this is reviewers little clippy. Um of course I've had some conversations, which I'll have more after our walkthrough today. But if you want to have a message you know, ask a question. Uh, let's see, I can't upload a file. And of course, a lot of it uh, will be initially AI. However, uh, it didn't help. Um, let's see, just now. Okay, please reach out to the admin organization. Okay. What about, um, I want to ask a question now about Am I getting a character? So anyways, this is just a little uh, helping assistance right there live. Uh, it did kind of help. I can help you with. Okay. I also don't want to, they're going to think I'm reaching out to them. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm glad you brought us back, Nicole. We got our little helper here. And then of course, uh, any barriers to, you know, even they have the little helper there, uh, core funding website, definitely reach out to them and they'll be able to assist you and guide you. We have a couple um, more questions that came yeah. through the chat, Daniel. Yeah. So um, there's a question about uh, the budget. Budget tabs show fiscal year 24, 25 to be completed. Mm -hmm. Is that for the 25, 26 program period? Mm. Does that question make sense to you or do we need? Yeah, yeah. what I'm understanding is they're, they basically have the, the different, for the, for the core funding cycle, 25, 28, they have a different fiscal year. That's what I'm understanding. And if that's okay, I, I think that's the question. If it's okay to have the, the fiscal year 24, 25, is that what I'm understanding? Which I, I would I would say let's confirm that with core funding. Um, okay. If Poonam, do you want to come off mute and let us know whether that answered your question or or were you asking something slightly different? Oh hi yes this is Poonam. Um, basically I think currently we are still funded until June of 2025. Correct. 
Uh, we have an existing program. Um, by our fiscal uh, calculations, we call that FY25. So when I see a budget document that says that I still need to fill in FY24-25 uh, onwards, I'm a little confused. Is it by the application date that you set financial year, fiscal year? Right. Or is it by the program delivery date? Yeah. No, another great question. Another great question to kind of clarify and what what date are we referring to? So I'd refer to core funding for that. Great questions today. And then we had another question. Let's see. To clarify. Additional submissions under one login require that each additional submission have the financial documents attached each time. So it's basically asking, I think, for verification that that is accurate. Right. I believe so that once you click another submission, it, it will ask you for those um, five documents. In fact, let me go back to that page or that section. Yeah. Um, and I think the purpose of that was if there is a, a difference in um, any of those documents, uh, you'd be able to go ahead and, and transfer those over. But you are correct. You you will have to uh, upload um, every time there's a new submission, uh, these five new uh, categories. And then there's a question about um, can the link to the interest survey be shared by email and I think the that's an easy one to answer that yes that we sent yes. out that's actually a great segue I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing I want to honor time that's actually a great segue because um, in our closing I want to go ahead and again share uh, there's a core RFP voluntary. It's non-binding, but it is an interest survey uh, for those that are planning to um, uh, enter a submission. Um, and it's just for the team, the core team, to have an idea of uh, um, how many submissions are going to be coming in, uh, if there's going to be multiple proposals, and again, uh, under what core condition. Uh, helps us set up panels uh, and helps us get a step ahead. So again, non-binding. So if you uh, put it something in and then you're like, oh, we switched, um, no need to worry, but it gives us an idea of where the uh, core proposals are coming into. Any questions? A lot of the questions today are very, 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 very well and very well thought out. Hey, come back. And we say core funding at Santa Cruz County CA.gov. So not only you're able to receive that question, but also those interested in uh, submitting. And again, that would be due that would be posted in our question and response document that we saw earlier uh, on the core funding website. Uh, I'm gonna open up some space for Nicole to go ahead and discuss some of the remaining training schedules and TA signups. Thanks, Daniel. And I know I've seen several people on this call uh, attending trainings and TA sessions already, which is great. So we have just a couple more structured trainings scheduled. On July 9th, we'll be covering the program budget and budget narrative and the leveraging template. And then July 12th, this is kind of a, in case you missed it, here are some highlights from all the trainings we've done. And um, we do have one more set of open office hours coming up on July 2nd. So those are the kinds of sessions where we don't have any structured presentations. It's really, you know, one session per core condition. Uh, if you have any questions that you want some guidance on, um, it's really, you come with whatever questions you have and we talk through them as a group. And then the individualized TA sessions, we're still recommending that people sign up for your initial sessions sometime between now and July 8th. And then we'll work with you to schedule your second session. Um, the slots are starting to fill up pretty quickly. And so if you haven't yet, um, grabbed your first TA session slot, encourage you to do that soon. Even if you don't fully know yet what questions you wanna ask, uh, because we wanna make sure that we have that time set aside for you. And um, thank you, Vidiana, for um, posting all the links in the, in the chat there. 
Awesome. I want to thank my colleagues to help me. Thank you, Nicole, Viriana, and thank you all for joining. Uh, again, any other questions uh, concerning the core RFP? A lot of great ones today. Uh, uh, send it to the core funding uh, email address. Daniel, we had one more question come through in yeah. the chat. Do you want to address this one? Can you yeah. submit individual submissions, although you have several in the works with the one login? Yes. So you could submit the different submissions you have. And they all don't have to be at the same time, if that's what you're saying. You can go ahead, work on one, submit that one, uh, work on another one, submit that one. Yeah. You don't have to submit them all at once. I hope that's clear. And again, just to circle back, you can also edit it up to uh, the deadline date. Thank you, Daniel. This is really helpful and a great walkthrough of the <clears throat> platform itself. And um, we will stay on for maybe another minute or two, just in case anyone has any lingering questions. But if you need to jump off, you're welcome to move on to your other, other things for the day. Thanks, everyone.